In this short presentation, I'll be focusing on how to convert an open chain structure for a monosaccharide into its cyclic structure, which is also known as a Hayworth projection. The first thing that you need to do is rotate this molecule by 90 degrees. Or put it another way, if I was to knock this molecule down to the right, what would happen is all these atoms would be facing down and these atoms here on the left would be facing up. So we end up with, that's carbon number one. Let's number these, two, three, four, five, and there's number six there. Okay, so we just looked after carbon number one, now we're gonna move on to carbon number two. You may recall that these Hayworth projections, these cyclic structures, look hexagonal when we're dealing with things like galactose and glucose. So now we've got to bend this forward. That point here represents the second carbon, which is carbon 2. And in carbon 2, you can see that the OH, if we knock this down in this direction, the OH will be pointing down. So we've got an OH pointing down. Now we're going to move across. Now we're going to be on carbon number three, and on carbon three, you can see that the OH is pointing up. Right now, moving on to carbon number four, so we're going to have to bend this back. On carbon four, the OH is pointing up. Moving on to five. So carbon number five, we're dealing with an OH, a CH2OH, and a hydrogen. That's still with that CH2OH first. So that's pointing upwards. Now that's still with that OH. You can see what I've done here, I've expanded so you could see the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So the only thing that's missing is the hydrogen. And the hydrogen is going to be pointing down in this example. So you may have noticed that I've put in the OHs, etc., but I haven't included the hydrogens. And this is common in um, cyclic structures. Um, you'll see the OHs pointing in particular directions, but you won't necessarily see the hydrogen. So the rule is that if there's an OH pointing up, then a hydrogen is going to be pointing down. So in this particular case, an OH is pointing down, so you get an hydrogen there, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and then of course a hydrogen here. Okay, so we're nearly there. We've just got to now connect this oxygen to this carbon in order to create this cyclic structure. But there are a number of steps that need to occur before this can happen. The first step is that this hydrogen needs to break away from this oxygen. So it's going to break away and make a beeline for this other oxygen here. And at the same time, this occurs, this bond is broken. So we've broken this bond. Then what will happen is as that hydrogen attaches to that oxygen, this bond will break, or one of the bonds will break. So we're left with a single bond between that carbon and that oxygen, and then that hydrogen comes in and bonds with that oxygen. And then the final step, the oxygen here bonds directly to this carbon there. So now we've got our Hayworth cyclic structure for the monosaccharide D-galactose. A couple of things. You can see that the OH here is pointing down. It could have potentially been pointing up as well. So we need to tell the reader that this happens to be the cyclic structure for galactose that has the OH on carbon number one pointing down. And we normally designate the Greek letter alpha for this. 
So if the OH is pointing down, this will be known as the alpha version of D for lactose. If on the other hand it was pointing up, which in this case it's not, it would be called the beta version. So alpha versus beta, dependent on whether this OH is pointing down or up on carbon number one. Now an interesting point, if you look at carbon number one in the open fissure projection, you will see that it's surrounded by one, two, three different groups of atoms, which means that it doesn't possess chirality. On the other hand, if you look at carbon number one here, it's now surrounded by one, two, three, four different groups of atoms. So, so all of a sudden now we have an extra chiral carbon, and that's designated a name, and that's called the anomeric carbon. So that's the anomeric carbon, and that's a new center of chirality. In the Fisher projection, it's quite easy to see how many chiral carbons we have, because each of these intersections represents a chiral carbon. So we've got one, two, three, four. So it's got four chiral carbons, whereas this now has five. So again, it's D-galactose, and it's got five chiral carbons. So just to finish this off, the full name for this version of D-galactose would be alpha D-galactose, because the OH on the anomeric carbon is pointing down. So if you see alpha D-galactose, you're definitely dealing with a Hayworth projection. So this is the Hayworth projection, which is cyclic. And this is the Fisher projection. which is the open chain structure. What you may like to do next is have a play around maybe with D-glucose and see how you can convert D-glucose into alpha D-glucose by following the steps that we've followed in this current presentation.